Hello, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new and this is the first time that you are here and you just clicked over from another YouTube video, welcome. My name is Lindsay and I do lots of handmade journals, junk journals, paper crafting, things like that. So I have two journal flip throughs to share with you. These are both custom orders and I actually have this listing in my shop. If you want to order one similar, I've made ones and filmed one similar to this before. This is called the Vintage Ladies Daybook Journal or Vintage Ladies Journal. They're four by six size super fun this this flip through also comes with tips so I have a few different tips that I want to share with you so here we go these go to two different ladies but I made them extremely similar um, I used some cardstock here that looks like a cross stitch design they have the gold book corner stitching and then a graphics fairy image of this lady um, that's holding like an album. It says album on it and then like a little briefcase. She has an adorable little hat. And what I did this time, which I haven't done before, is I put a blank coffee dyed label up here so you could write your favorite quote, word, whatever. So I just thought that was kind of a neat touch. This is a removable gold closure and it just is right through the stitching here. You can pull it right out if you want to. So um, they are extremely similar, so I'm gonna go pretty quickly through them. But we're going to come to tip one, which is lining the cardstock. And this is something, <laughs> I'm pretty slow in learning some of these things, and most of you probably know it, but if it was something I learned recently in the past few weeks, maybe somebody else will benefit from hearing about it. So um, I've lined my cardstock many times before, but a lot of times I get creases and bends and the paper slips, even when I glue it first before I sew it. So I think I kind of stumbled across this accidentally, but it has worked. And that is I use a glue stick um, most of the way around it pretty well, and then I press the paper down really flat, and then I walk away and do something else and come back in 5, 10, 15 minutes when it is totally dry, and then I stitch it. Um, after that, I can fold it in half, and it's like the two pieces of paper are one. So the key for me is to don't rush, let it dry, go do something else and come back. So I lined this one with like this cross stitch tutorial like magazine paper. I thought that went well. And there's a little vintage game card pocket. This is a little like month journaling card. It says November. And since we're almost to November, I thought that was a nice thing to put in there. And then this is a little um, booklet. And I had somebody ask me, and I'm going to be filming a question and answer video where someone asked this, but I'm going to address this now because it's here. So using cutoffs from like coffee dyed paper, they said, what ways can you use cutoffs besides making paper ribbons? And this is one thing. It's a little booklet. I just folded it in half, stapled at the top so you can journal on all these pages. And then I just took um, a little punt paper punch. I punched out this leaf print on the front and then used it as a stencil so that on the first page here you have that leaf design. And then I just tucked it in here. And I've got this idea from Paula Lemon. She does amazing things like that all the time, these little booklets. So that's where I got a booklet idea from. We have a little vintage day sheet here and then this, the story begins. This is from a Tim Holtz journal card. There's some gold ink here on this index card, a little leaf, um, a, like a fabric leaf. This is from Digital Collage Club. It's a little postcard domino. So this is a second tip and that is find the collage sheets on Etsy or Digital Collage Club. She has a website, digitalcollageclub.com and find the domino sheets that are meant for collaging you know, like maybe you're doing a whole mixed media piece, but they're a perfect size to cut out and just use a glue stick and put on the edge of your pages for a little interest, but it does not add bulk. It's not too big and there's still plenty of room to write. So that's my tip with that. Little 1950s magazine page. This is from one of my ephemera kits. It's either Tell Me a Story or Vintage Storytime. I never remember which ones are in which kit because it's pretty much part one and part two of vintage storybook images. There's a label here. This is from Seneca Pond Crafts. It says Treasures of Yesterday. Little established stamp. I just put, added this little Tim Holtz person. Maybe it's this lady's son or something like that. 
I have a video coming up about different ways to use postage stamps in journals. And so um, I don't know whether I'll use this idea in the video, but I just glued it on a little tag here. This tag is from Above Par Crafts on Etsy. She's down in the description box below along with the coupon code. So please check out her shop for supplies. I also got this vintage twine from her as well. Stamping and then I stitched another uh, stamp on here. There's a little Tim Holtz dog and a little cork, looks like a cork board shoe. It says my style. Some vintage catalog pages, stamping. There's a tag I made last night. I was just trying to use up scraps. I also made this one, this little tag last night. I have so many scraps. I also made that. So many scraps. Some little things there. I also did this one last night. It's just a little tag from a cutoff. Here's a little collage page. So there's a book page, a stamp, and a little mini label. And that is the end of this one. So there are more tips that I'm going to talk about in this because the next tip is how I made these journals quickly, but almost the same. And while I was decorating, let's see, I think I was decorating this one. Yes, so this was the first one I started on. And and first I just started decorating here. I added the little vintage page. I added a little rose tag that I made. And then when I came to this one and I stamped here, I thought before I put this stamp away, I have this journal sitting right here. Why don't I just open it up to a page? And this is the page I opened it to. And why don't I just stamp it? That way a page is already done and I don't have to reach for a stamp again. So that's what I did. But this one I used some a yellow colored pencil and a gold gel pen. I'm not gonna mention everything here because there's a lot of similarities. But the same thing with this little tuck spot, it was cut off of a Tim Holtz uh, journal card. And so I just cut another piece off here. And then both of these I made last night and they're very similar. They were sitting next to each other and I just tucked them both in. Saved a ton of time. When I was gluing on these little embellishments, again, like you saw in here, I just grabbed a few more, opened up to a blank page and did the same thing in there saved me a lot of time. So if you are making more than one journal at a time and you want them to be similar and you wanna save a little bit of time, this is especially a great idea for Etsy shop owners because a lot of times your customers will want, there'll be more than one customer who wants a specific book. So if you can list a couple of them, then um, you can make them very similar very quickly. It's also a good idea for Christmas presents. And if you're making little stocking stuffer journals or Christmas present journals and say you make a list and you count it up that you need to make six different journals for Christmas presents. Well, you can kind of make six at the same time and get them done in maybe half the time it would take to start each one start to finish. So just little tips and tricks along the way. I really like how these come out. I also love how each time I make this journal, it comes out different and yet it still has the same basic theme and the same lovely vintage lady from the Graphics Fairy on the front cover. So if you like this video and would like to see more tips and tricks and journal flip throughs, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and then there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. If you click that, you will actually be notified by a little message at the top of your phone or on your computer um, when a new video is posted so you don't miss that and you don't have to wonder when a new video is coming out. If you want to purchase a journal very similar to this with this lovely vintage lady, then just click the link in the description box below. It'll take you to my shop where you can purchase that. It is a custom made to order, so there will be slight differences, but it will still have the same theme and the same feel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next video.